This is something that I've even said, don't do it. I wouldn't recommend doing it. We did it, full carbon. And also I painted the house. What's going on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh yeah, so much. All right, let's get into it. So I am Johnny Nerd Out. I am a professional custom e-bike builder. I take bikes like this um, and just make these things killer, killer e-bikes, way better than an e-bike you could buy off the shelf that you could go online and click and go blah, and then you get it and you're like, eh, this thing isn't nearly as fast or nearly as comfortable or nearly as, doesn't go nearly as far as my friend's bike who built it himself or had some dude named Johnny Nerd Out build it for him for the same price or even possibly less. That's why custom e-biking, custom e-bike building is, it's the future. As soon as people start catching on and start riding with people who have their own e-bikes, they're gonna be like, damn, I should have done that. But anywho, let's get into this. This is the K1 Carbon. Generally, you know, I've made videos saying don't convert a carbon fiber bike. I told this customer that, I said, I wouldn't do it. And he's like, do it. And I'm like, I really don't want to. I think it's gonna break. And he's like, I don't, dude, I don't care. What did I just tell you? And it got heated. He had me by the, by the scruff over the phone. So this is all, you know, metaphorically. And I was like, all right, as long as you know what you're signing up for. He's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm a motorcycle racer. The, the guy, this guy, this customer is my kind of guy. He's in his 70s and soups up motorcycles. And so he, so he's not afraid of a little danger in his life. The thing about carbon fiber is they don't just like slowly break. You know, if you, if this thing shatters, if you hit a thing, this thing is gonna just kind of explode. So it's gonna, it fails majestically to put it shortly. So anyways, let's go over this. This bike, I just weighed it, uh, weighs 48 pounds, fully assembled, fully weighted, like the wet weight, I guess is what you would say, on, on the motorcycles. So yeah, this is way lighter than a pre-made e-bike. So it's got a BBS HD 68 millimeter down here. Uh, it's rated at 1,000 watts nominal, pumps out well over 1,600. Um, we got the Lecky 42 tooth right here. So this is gonna be pretty good hill climber. Um, Cause I think this is a 32 or 34 in the back. So it's not quite a one to one gear ratio, but it's still gonna get up any hills. If you wanted it to fly up hills, I would swap this out. This is an easy swap out. I'd get something with like a 40 tooth, like 11 to 40, even 11 to 50. If you wanna just be doing wheelies all the time. We've got a 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour Super Shark battery here. I really like these batteries. They got the really universal mounting plates underneath here. So they'll fit in almost any battery. We got the 500C color display. It's a really nice display. It's small, compact. You don't have two separate things. It's all integrated into one. So it keeps your cockpit a little bit cleaner. It's got hydraulic disc brakes. So we had to install the magnetic magnets on here, magnetic magnets on here. Um, he wanted a full, we got the full twist grip here. So it's like a total motorcycle. We got that theme going here. He's got RockShox front fork up here with remote lockout, which is kind of nice. So it's ready to go in street mode. You don't want to have a suspension really if it's really smooth pavement. And if you're going to go off road or it's getting choppy, turn that front suspension on. Take a look at these rims. I don't know if you, if you can see this spoke pattern. There's 24 spokes here, but you see they're, they're joined together. These are really kind of interesting spoke pattern. He wanted to put an internally geared hub. He's like, let's just do the whole thing. We're gonna do it, let's do it right. And I was like, well, we can, but man, these spokes, like these wheel sets, we're either gonna have mismatched wheels because we can't lace a 32 hole into a 24 hole rim. So we're either gonna have to replace the rim and then they're not gonna mismatch or we're gonna have to replace both wheel. You know, there's a whole thing. And he's like, just forget it. <laughs> we'll go to the next one. We'll do it on the next one. Uh, we got a torque arm here because I didn't want to, the thing with the carbon fiber, I didn't want to just torque it normally on an aluminum or steel frame. I torque these things down really hard. I probably go even more than what it's specs at. With this, I didn't want to do that because it's a carbon fiber frame. You do that and you're just asking for trouble. So I did it tight but not crazy tight, but I put a torque arm on here that fastens to the seat tube here. It's gonna keep it from, keep the motor from flexing down and you know working itself loose. And that's like a $15 part. So if you have something like this, you can proceed with it with caution, but I would also do the same thing. Don't tighten it down all the way, putting all that pressure on that bottom bracket because it's carbon fiber. 
put a torque arm on there instead to kind of brace it. And also if you're having issues, some people they're having issues with their motors coming loose. A lot of the times it's because they put that little mounting bracket on backwards. So the teeth aren't grabbing into the bike, they're actually grabbing into the lock nut, which is doing nothing. But you may also want that if you have that problem where your motor's constantly coming loose. I've never had that problem, so I don't know what's going on there, but I have a feeling like it's just not on tight or it's on backwards. Anyways, let's go do a performance test. I test this top speed, um, just throttle, and climbing a super 30 degree uh, hill with just throttle as well, starting at the very beginning of it. So let's go check it out. So you can see this thing climbed it no problem. I felt like I was almost doing a wheelie the entire time, maybe because I wasn't down enough, but I climbed that hill no problem. Um, top speed, 34 miles an hour. This wasn't a fully charged battery. I think it was at like 52 or 53 volts. It was like a 60% charge. So if it was fully charged, it might eke out another mile an hour or two possibly. So, you know, mid thirties, that's what you're gonna get with a BBS HD on a bike like this. But again, it might go a little bit faster if it was fully charged. Um, oh yeah, we got the gear shift sensor right here. Click on the description below if you want to get links to all the parts. If you want to order something just like this, I'll put the link to all the parts that I used on this in the description. And go to johnnynerdout.com if you want to, you know, support small business instead of Amazon or, you know, some of the other uh, shady e-bike businesses, I would say. Uh, much appreciated. All right, later, guys.